Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and keep watching more details. The Curse of Oak Island, Discovery of a Massive Wharf, deepens the mystery. This week on Season 8, Episode 23 of The Curse of Oak Island, the team uncovered an old massive wharf just off the property of 18th-century landowner Samuel Ball, leading to more theories that he was involved in burying secret treasure on the island. The episode was named Old Wharf's Tale, and the tale in question came from Stuart Wenzel, a Nova Scotian local who had worked on Oak Island for treasure hunter Dan Blankenship way back in the 1970s. Wenzel was invited into the Oak Island Research Center to tell the guys about how he had, while diving offshore in the 1970s, come across large sharp-edged stones under the water's surface, which he believed had been used as cribbing in a wharf. He claimed that the wharf had stretched out to sea approximately 100 feet from Samuel Ball's property. This was all news to the Fellowship of the Dig, so they decided to draft an expert diver Tony Sampson to see if he could find this huge wharf. The team has long been fascinated by the mysterious Samuel Ball. He was a former slave from South Carolina who fought against the Americans in the Revolutionary War and was granted his freedom by the British. After the war, Ball settled on Oak Island, where he became a successful cabbage farmer. He amassed about 100 acres of land on the island and nearby. His wealth has never been satisfactorily explained, which has led some to suspect he may have been involved with the fabled treasure buried on the island. The guys, led by archaeologist Laird Niven, have been exploring his former property for many years now. Last week, they found what looked like a secret trap door in the foundations of his house. The guys are hoping to find treasure underneath. The team have also found a number of intriguing artifacts on the Ball property that suggest he may have had a connection to the British Navy or to members of that Navy, interesting as he had been an army man when he served. Royal Navy button found at Samuel Ball's home. On last night's episode, Alex Legina found another connection between Ball and the British Maritime Service when he found a button from a Royal Navy jacket on the cabbage farmer's property. The button had gold gilding on it, which suggests it belonged to an officer. Did Ball have some kind of a relationship with an officer in the British Navy? Perhaps connected to buried treasure on the island? Not one, but two wharves bordering Samuel Ball's property. This puzzle led to diver Tony Sampson donning a wetsuit to check out Wenzel's tale of a massive wharf just off Ball's property, and sure enough, he found evidence of two wharves. The first wharf was a simple small affair, what the guys called a fisherman's wharf. However, the second was massive, approximately 75 to 100 feet. Why on earth would a cabbage farmer need a wharf of such a size? This discovery, along with the theory that the swamp was once an open harbor, combined with the strange hidden stone roadway, all speaks to a massive operation done on the island at least 200 years ago, an operation that was done completely in secret. The search for treasure on Oak Island has always been a tale of perseverance, mystery, and whispers of ancient secrets. For centuries, this small island off the coast of Nova Scotia has enticed explorers with its promise of buried fortune, hidden by who knows what shadowy group. From the Knights Templar to pirates and privateers, theories abound, now with the discovery of a massive, weathered wharf submerged beneath years of silt and stone, the mystery deepens. The wharf came to light during a routine scan of the island's coastline, Marty and Rick Lagina. Long accustomed to the ebb and flow of hope and frustration, were skeptical at first. How many false leads had they chased over the years? How many odd, unexplainable finds had led them deeper into a labyrinth of confusion? But this, this was different. The sonar scans didn't lie. A large, intricate wooden structure lay hidden just off the island's coast, its timbers worn by time but unmistakably man-made, and large, too large to be anything ordinary. The discovery sent waves through the Oak Island team. They had uncovered wharves before small docks that suggested the island had seen more traffic than its size or location might imply. But this one was vast. It wasn't just a dock for a few small ships. This was a full-fledged port, designed to accommodate substantial vessels. The structure stretched deep underwater, its size hinting at something grander than the fleeting visits of treasure hunters or fishermen. The craftsmanship, too, suggested an origin far more ancient and deliberate. Who built this? 
and why. As the excavation began, the mystery only thickened. The wharf's construction didn't match anything from the island's known history. The wood, tested by experts, was centuries old, predating many of the documented expeditions to Oak Island. The logs had been felled and shaped with tools that didn't align with the rudimentary technology of local settlers or early explorers. The materials seemed out of place, as if imported from a distant land crafted by hands with knowledge long forgotten. The team, electrified by the discovery, worked day and night to uncover more. As they dug deeper into the surrounding sediment, they found oddities that defied explanation. Ancient iron spikes and metal fragments appeared, tools that seemed oddly ceremonial in nature, their design unfamiliar to even seasoned archaeologists. Embedded in the wharf structure were strange markings, barely visible after centuries of wear, symbols that looked like they might be Templar in origin. This hint fed into the long-held theory that the Knights Templar had hidden something of immense value on Oak Island. But why would they need a wharf of this magnitude? Had they transported something too large or precious to be moved by small boats alone? Rick Lagina, staring at the eerie symbols, felt the familiar tug of history's invisible hand. What were they trying to hide? Could it be that this massive structure was key to a larger mystery, one that reached far beyond treasure? The wharf's size suggested commerce or construction on a scale the island had never seen. If treasure had been hidden here, perhaps it wasn't a mere chest of gold, but something grander, a temple, a vault, an armory. Some began to speculate whether the wharf was built not for unloading goods, but to stage an exodus, an evacuation of something too dangerous or powerful to be left in plain sight. Meanwhile, Marty remained cautiously optimistic. In all their years searching, they'd found pieces of a larger puzzle, but never the core. They had unearthed odd relics, manuscripts, and the occasional coin, but the island had guarded its central secret well. And yet this felt closer to a breakthrough than ever before. If the wharf were indeed part of a vast operation, then there had to be a way to track where its builders had gone, or what they had hidden. The currents around Oak Island were treacherous, but the placement of the wharf indicated that someone had sailed in and out with great skill, avoiding the perils of the sea as they constructed this massive structure. Theory swirled. Could the wharf have been part of an even grander network, connecting Oak Island to other, yet undiscovered sites of historical significance? The possibility of underground tunnels or hidden passageways seemed more plausible than ever. With so much of the island still unexplored, the team began to speculate whether the wharf could serve as a clue, pointing toward an entrance to something buried deep within the island's core. And then came the most perplexing find of all. Beneath the remains of the wharf, in the murky depths of the water, the team stumbled upon a large, sealed stone vault. The vault was impossible to open by conventional means. Its exterior was encrusted with barnacles and layers of sediment that had calcified over time, making it an immovable object. But scans revealed something metallic and reflective inside. The excitement was palpable. Could this be the treasure they had sought for so long, or was it something even more valuable, more dangerous? A forgotten relic? A lost artifact of immense power. As they worked to extract the vault from the sea's grip, Rick felt the weight of the island's centuries-old mystery pressing down on him. This was it. The island, which had guarded its secrets so fiercely, seemed ready to reveal something. But what? And at what cost? In the quiet moments between shifts, the team would often pause to reflect on the sheer strangeness of it all. The island had drawn them in, just as it had drawn so many before them. They were following the same invisible thread that had pulled others to this remote place, a thread that spanned centuries, continents, and perhaps even civilizations. The massive wharf, buried and forgotten for so long, was now their compass, pointing toward an answer that had eluded generations. But as with all things on Oak Island, every answer only birthed more questions.